Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So in this today's video, we'll be solving the problem game of Zord. This is a medium level question and it's a problem of the day on Geeks for Geeks today. The company tags of this question are Amazon and the topic tags are mathematical bit magic, data structures and algorithms. So what is the question saying? Given an array A of size n, the value of an array is denoted by the bitwise or of all elements it contains. Okay. So whatever the array you're talking about, the value of it is actually defined as the bitwise or of all the elements present in it. Find the bitwise or of, of the values of all the subarrays of A. So if there is an array given to you, A, so there might be many subarrays possible. So for each of the subarrays, the value of it sub that particular subarray is the or of all the elements present in that subarray. Okay. And finally, you return you need to return the bitwise or of all the values of all the subarrays. Okay. So for each and every subarray, you need to calculate the or value, I mean uh, value of that particular uh, subarray, and you need to do the or of all those values. Okay. That is what the question is saying. So these are some of the examples given we'll see that in brief and the expected time complexity is o of n and space complexity is o of n that is what we'll also you know uh, uh, use it to solve uh, you know our particular problem and constraints are n goes up to 10 power 5 and a, a of i the element goes up to 10 power 9 okay so let us go through the example now so this is the example that has been given n equal to 3 a equal to 1 2 3 so why is the output 2 if we can just carefully understand zor of 1 equal to 1 what is it what uh, does that mean zor of 1 equal to 1 in the sense so what are the subarrays including the first element there is only one subarray that includes the first element right that is only one and what's the zor of that one now come to this particular two so if i'm actually looking out at two what are the subarrays that include two so that can be one two can be two three or just two alone so if it's one two what is the zor of that so it is one zor two one zor two that's actually equal to three if you can just you can verify it by doing normal bits and you know evaluating each and every bit and what is uh, 2 or 3 so 2 or 3 is actually equal to 1 okay and what is just 2 or of 2 just 2 it's just 2 okay so this and this is done now coming to this particular 3 what are the subarrays that can be possible ending at that particular 3 it can be 1 2 3 it can be 2 3 or just 3 alone if it's 1 2 3 what is the zor so 1 2 3 zor 1 zor 2 zor 3 is actually equal to 0 and what is 2 zor 3 that is actually uh, that's already done that's here it is there it is 1 and uh, Okay, so and what is just three? Just zor of three. That's actually equal to uh, three. Okay. Now if we can just do the zor of all these things. Okay. One zor, three zor, one zor. Uh, I mean two. Uh, like a uh, zor of each and every you know result. You'll be getting this particular final result. That is actually equal to two. Okay. You can just manually verify by taking the bits and you know solving it. Uh, you can easily get the required answer, right? So these are the, all the possibilities that uh, you, a sub uh, in array as like all the subarrays and calculating the zor of each and every value fine so i hope you people are understanding how did we come to this conclusion and uh, now let us frame the approach okay now let us frame this approach uh, i'll just erase these parts so uh, okay um so yeah fine so what are the basic concepts of zor concepts okay zor properties there is a very basic concept of uh, zor property that says that if an element like if you're doing a zor of an element x okay like x zor x zor x zor like this for even number of times even number of times then it's actually equal to zero the final result would be zero but if you're doing it for odd number of times x zor x zor x zor so till odd number of times it will be x okay so this is a very fundamental property of uh, zor okay zor property Zor property. So you can just uh, use it, uh, you know, you can just verify it from your side as well, taking few examples. You'll be able to understand why is this so. Okay. So x or x or x for even number of times, it would result in a zero. And if it's an odd number of times that you're doing, it will result in x. So if you can just, you know, use this particular uh, property to evaluate this, uh, you know, required thing. So it boils down to the question boils down to find the number of times a particular element occurs. Okay. So if, for example, if we take this example, so we just need to find how many times one appears. Okay. How many times one appears in the sense how many subarrays one is a part of okay how many subarrays how many subarrays subarrays one is a part of once once a part of okay once a part of similarly evaluate that for that for two okay how many subarrays two is a part of similarly evaluate it for three how many subarrays eval uh, three is a part of okay so if you do this so one let us assume it has been a part of x subarrays two is been a part of y subarrays so three is been a part of z subarrays so if one is a part of x subarrays if x actually is even okay if x actually is is even so that means one will be zor for even number of times right ones or ones or ones for even number of times and eventually it will be zero so the ones contribution in the 
total result is zero. Okay, so you need not calculate it. Now coming to two, if it is a uh, uh, like if it is uh, you know they are in y's subarrays and let us assume y's odd this time. That means two's or two's or two's or is for y number of times, right? Uh, that means it is an odd number because y we are considering to be an odd number, so the final result would be two. So final contribution from two is two. So what did you understand? If a particular number is a part of even number of subarrays, okay? If a particular number is a, a part of even number of subarrays, then the overall contribution of it would be zero. But if it's in part of odd number of subarrays, then it can be again the contribution is that element itself. Okay, so it boils down to this particular thing because of this particular base uh, basic property of ZOR that even number of times ZORing an element would result in zero, odd number of times ZORing an element would result in that particular element itself. Okay, so using the same thing. Now, what is the only thing that we are left out? What is the only thing that we are left out to find how many uh, subarrays that element a uh, element can be a part of? So for that, we'll do the basic, you know, very simple proof. Uh, there is no complex proof for it. Let us assume there is an element like this. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. I have taken this array just for a good example. Fine. So let us take this uh, particular element. What three? Okay. What are all the subarrays to the left, including it? So that could be one. Uh, sorry. That is yeah. One, two, three. Okay. And two, three. Okay. And then three. Okay. These are the subarrays that are including it. And what are the subarrays to the part of to the left of it? It can be four, five. And it can be only four. I'll just I'll write it in a correct. Okay, four, five. It's fine. Four. Okay, or four. So what can you be clearly observe here? So these are the subarrays appearing to the right. Uh, I'll just use a different thing. These are the subarrays including to the right without, without including, without including, without including ith element. Okay. So this is the ith element that we are without including this and this with including. With including and left, with including and left side, okay, and left side. So, what are all the subarrays possible for three? Let us first list them, uh, list them out. So, what are all the subarrays possible for three? It is a uh, one, two, three. Uh, it is a uh, two, three. It is a uh, three, and it is a uh, three, four. It is a uh, three, four, five, and uh, it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is also a subarray. Like whole array can also be a subarray because we are including 3 in it and we are not breaking anywhere. And what are the other subarrays? 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. And are there anything left out? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, there are few left out. And that is 2, 3, 4. And then uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right. So, <clears throat> We have got to overall nine subarrays possible. Nine subarrays possible that include the particular element that is three. So how did we come to this conclusion? If we can use this particular things here, if we can use this particular thing, how can we come to this conclusion? If one two three, if this one two three is joined with four five, so originally one two three is there, one two three is counted here, fine. And two three is there, two three is a counted here, three is there, three is also counted here, four five, four five. Uh, where is where did we write uh, four five? Uh, okay, uh, I just yeah, four five is, uh, is just the subarrays that are not excluding uh, excluding that are excluding item. Right, so three four can be considered to be including four, and three four five we can consider to be part of three four five, uh, four five. Okay, so now these are done. Now, how are we getting these four? How are we getting these four? So one two three when club with four five we get this. One two three when club with four we get this. One two two three when club with four five we get this. And two three when club with four we get this. Similarly, if we club three with four five we are going to get this. Uh, sorry, we are going to get this. And when three is club with four we are going to get this. Okay. So if you can clearly observe, if you can clearly observe till i element t uh, till i element, what are the subarrays to the left of it, including it? These are i plus one. So what is i here? That is two. Now to the left of uh, uh, i element, how many subarrays that are including it? Two plus one. That's actually equal to three. Okay. Two plus one that are actually equal to three. And now we are including the sub uh, uh, subarrays that are to the right side of three. We are trying to we merge them. Okay, we are trying to merge all the subarrays that are uh, that uh, that are possible to the right side of three. So that is how many. So if we clearly observe, it is two here. Two. Why it is two? Because it's basically n minus i plus one. Okay. So what is n? N is equal to five here. Right. N equal to five here. So five minus two plus one. Two is the i value. Right. So actually equal to two. Five minus three equal to zero. So you are basically trying to add i plus one. You, you are trying to initially you have i plus one subarrays. Initially you have i plus one subarrays. All these things are uh, uh, subarrays. This can all be a valid subarrays because all these three, all these subarrays have three as the last element or including element. Now i plus one is there. Anyways, i plus one subarrays are there. Now you are trying to do what are you trying to do? The second thing you are trying to merge this i plus one with all this n minus i plus one. So you are doing, you are trying to do this i plus one into n minus i plus one. This is what you are trying to do, right? So i plus one subarrays are originally there to the left side of it, including three. Fine, that is uh, that is completely okay. Now whatever the subarrays that are appearing into the right side of three that you're trying to merge with the left subarrays. So for that, this is a formula. Okay, i plus one into n minus i plus one. So n minus i plus one denotes the number of subarrays to the right side of i that does not include i element. Okay, so if you just solve this, you get i plus one into one plus n minus i minus one. So one and one gets cancelled, you get i plus one into n minus i. So this is the number of subarrays. Number of number of subarrays. Number of subarrays including 
including ith element including ith element so you can even cross check what is i here what is i here that is i equal to 2 right i equal to 2 and we have got 9 as the answer just substitute uh, 2 here so 2 plus 1 into pi minus 2 that is actually equal to 3 into 3 that is actually equal to 9 so it is uh, cross checked right both of them are valid so you can just remember this particular formula what is that particular formula i plus 1 into n minus i so what is this saying this is saying the number of times number of uh, subarrays including i element so if this overall value comes out to be an odd for index i okay if it is odd then it means the contribution from that uh, element of that particular is array of i right contribution would be array of i if it is even if it is even the contribution is zero right if it's even the contribution is zero i, I hope you are understanding so i plus one into n minus y denotes the number of times the number of sub arrays uh, that include i element now if that turns out to be an odd number that means odd number of times that i element will be there so array of i can be the contribution final contribution but if it's even like even number of times it's appearing even number of uh, sub arrays are being formed so the overall contribution would be zero okay so how do you come to a conclusion whether this is an even or odd uh, so what is the overall component that we have i plus one into i plus 1 into n minus i this need to be an odd number if you are looking out for a contribution and if you are looking out for this to be an odd number two numbers multiplying will be an odd number only if both of them are odd only if both of them are odd okay only if both of them are odd so let us first evaluate this i plus 1 so if i plus 1 is odd i plus 1 is odd then what is i i would be even isn't it very basic concept if 5 is odd then 4 is even because 5 is equal to 4 plus 1 so if i plus 1 equal to odd i should be even so what does it mean if it's an even index then you can take it then you can take it if it's an odd index please leave it because if it's an odd odd plus 1 will be even so it will finally turn out to be an even number of contribution so you need you shouldn't take that because it's not going to contribute anything so you'll only be looking out for those indices that are even indices so that you'll be having an odd number of contribution but still there's some other component to be evaluated n minus i so n minus i must also be odd n minus i should also be odd now what did we come to a conclusion i is an even number i is an even number so n minus even must be an odd okay n minus even must be an odd how can n minus even be an odd if n is actually equal to an odd number okay so odd minus even so 5 minus 3 actually equal to uh okay uh, sorry 5 minus 2 so 5 minus 2 equal to 3 right so 5 is an odd number 2 is an even number 3 is an odd number so if your n is an odd number if your n is an odd number then only you can get a valid contribution if n is an even number let us assume it is an even so even minus even so 4 minus 2 let us take an example what is the re uh, end result that would be even 2 right so n minus even is actually even if if n is actually even so we we shouldn't want n to be even we want n to be odd right so what is the first final conclusion that you can de derive if your n is n is a num size of the uh, array is actually equal to an even number actually equal to an even number then the overall contribution would be zero the overall contribution is zero you need not evaluate further but if it's an odd number if n is an odd number then go on to all the indexes that are even okay go on to all the indices that, um, go on to the all the in even indices right so that's the only logic here fine this is the two conclusion first if what are the conclusions if n is actually equal to odd sorry n equal to even even the final answer is final answer is final answer equal to zero if n equal to e odd if n equal to odd that means go to even indexes okay even index indi indices and take their contribution okay and finally return that answer i hope you people have understood very basic logic just the using the basic properties of uh, you know czar and evaluating this formula this is the main you know important point this is the main important point to be honest so if you can understand the number of times a particular i element can be a part of a uh, number of sub arrays so you can directly evaluate it just boils down to number of times that element is occurring okay so we'll just count that itself so first thing what did we say if n turns out to be an even number if n by uh, n modulo to actually equal to zero then return zero so we need we we need not consider the you know arrays of uh, size even because that eventually will return zero so now coming to take int uh, final zor take that to be some zero final uh zor you can take any variable so for int i equal to zero i less than n i plus plus if that even index if that is an even index then consider it okay if i am zero you consider you consider the contribution from it would be uh that particular element so that is uh, a of i okay and finally return that final zor final zor that's it final zor i hope you people understood let us uh, just compile and run and check for your reference what happens um okay that's fine uh now we'll just submit it it works i've already checked uh just for your reference i'm doing it once again um okay fine so i hope you people have understood so if there are any doubts please feel free to comment in the comment section and for your reference codes in java python c++ are there in the description please go through them to be honest it's a very good problem and i'm very good at bit manipulation personally i saw a lot of problems so that is the reason i thought i should put my own you know self intuitions into it uh the only thing that uh you might find very uh, you know somewhat tricky is finding the number of sub arrays but if you just manually write them and check manually you know uh, solve them you'll be able to understand the complete proof of it there's no doubt in it okay so i hope you people have understood so thank you for watching guys stay tuned